A very well-meaning and very poor couple in Thailand sell their baby to what they believe is a reputable adoption agency. They have no idea that their baby's future will be one of sexual slavery. A college student in Europe receives a text to go pick up a care package being held at a local courier facility. They show up only to be kidnapped, forced into a crate, and shipped across the ocean to be forced into domestic servitude. An indigenous woman in northern Manitoba accepts an exciting job offer in Toronto, only to show up and be forced to work at a massage parlor in Markham, performing several sexual services a day. A man in part of a large pedophile ring in America flips through a catalog of missing children, shopping for kids as young as months old to satisfy the whims and desires of him and his friends. Now, you may think that these are trailers for movies or plots for suspense novels, but I assure you they're not. They are very real stories of human trafficking and they are happening in and around us at an astonishing rate. Human trafficking is modern day slavery and it is rape of the will of human beings. And it is the fastest growing criminal industry in our world generating over 150 billion US dollars a year. Think about that for a minute, 150 billion US dollars. Think about the cooperation that has to take place between millions of people in order for that to happen. And don't let the U.S. currency fool you. Human trafficking is not something that happens out there or in other countries. It is happening right here in Canada, in Ontario, in the GTA region. I have spoken with people that work in rescue organizations and they assure me that human trafficking is alive and well around us. You may even be passively involved and not even know it. So today, brothers and sisters, I ask that our hearts remain open as we hear what the Bible has to say about humanity and slavery. Let's open in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for you. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your son. We thank you for your word. Help us, God, to remain open today to what you would have us hear, what you would have us know about humanity and slavery. Please bless our time together here as your children. Amen. Hi, my name is Julie, and I am on the pastoral residency staff here at Bayview Glen. I've been coming here for about two years. I am in my 40s and I am a newlywed. I got married during COVID. That's a story for a different day. In fact, that's my husband, Zach, and I up there. Aren't we cute? Take it easy on him. He is also American and also the reason that I'm allowed to say y'all as much as I do. I just want to let you know how much I love our church and I'm so excited and grateful to be here and preach today, even though Pastor Lucas gave me the super easy topic of human trafficking to address. So where do we start? Well, where we should always start, which is in the Word of God. So what does the Bible say about humanity? The Bible says that each human life is worthy of dignity and value. I'm going to say that again. Each human life is worthy of dignity and value. Dignity means worthy of honor and respect, and value means regarding something as important. This idea of the dignity and value of human life is rooted in the creation narrative. In fact, some of the very first words we hear in scripture is about this. So in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27 and 31, we read, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. And God saw everything that he had made. And behold, it was very good. 
We are the created of the creator. We bear his image. That should already be enough. But if it's not hitting hard enough, let us remember the offering up of Jesus Christ on a cross as the ultimate proof of and value of human life as God deemed it and sees it. A really beautiful psalm that I love that speaks directly to what we just read is Psalm 8. In it, it, we read, What is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you care for him? Yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. Now, in light of what we just read about what the Bible says about the value of human life, you can probably take a pretty good guess at what the Bible is now going to say about slavery. And because Pastor Lucas said I could not preach an all-day revival, I only picked two verses in the Old Testament to speak on humanity and slavery. So the first one comes from the Mosaic Law in the Old Testament in Exodus 21, 16, and it reads, Whoever steals a man and sells him, and anyone found in possession of him, shall be put to death. And in Deuteronomy 24, 7, If a man is found stealing one of his brothers of the people of Israel, and if he treats them as a slave or sells him, then that thief shall die. So you shall purge the evil from your midst. I think that that is a pretty good indication of what the Bible says about slavery. And I know some of you are at home looking at me and saying, come on, Julie, but we know that there's parts in scripture that endorses slavery. And what I will say to that is, I know. In fact, a very ugly part of our history is that Christians used to use scripture to endorse slavery. But what I will tell you is that I've learned in my studies how important it is to zoom out from any one verse in scripture to look at the message as a whole. When we do that, we actually see that the Christian ethic on slavery is one that moves towards freedom. This is important. This trajectory, this movement away from enslaving people to freeing people. Now, this, by the way, was incredibly countercultural because it was very common in the Roman Empire that people were enslaved for purposes of forced labor, including human sacrifice, temple worship, and sexual services. So when this anti-slavery ideal hit the scene, it was very radical. But guess what? We belong to a radical faith. The seeds to free the oppressed were planted long ago. That's what Jesus was about. That's what he came here to do. In fact, we read in Luke 4, 18, Jesus says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Dear ones, it is not enough to simply know the Word of God. We must align ourselves with the mission and vision that He has for us as a people and for our world. So here's what we've established so far, that each and every human life is worthy of dignity and honor and respect. And that's not just something we came up with. This is an established divine principle. Thus, enslaving people in any way, shape, or form is in direct opposition to this principle and to what God has said about the human life. Now, because I know how smart and attentive you are, you are probably looking at me saying, well, but what can I do about it? Well, the good news is there's a lot you can do about it, and I'm going to talk about them right now. Number one, stop paying for sex. Now, I know none of you do that, but seriously, stop it. Why? Well, it's like supply and demand. Let's take COVID for example. Since March, over 10% of restaurants have permanently closed due to COVID. 
That's over 800,000 jobs. Why did they dry up? Because of supply and demand. Don't create a demand, the supply dries up. Stop paying for sex. And in case you weren't aware, the act of paying for sex isn't just an interaction between you and the services of someone who is being human trafficked. It is so much more than that. You are tapping into knowingly or not the abuse of a person in their holy temple that is supposed to be used to glorify God. How does paying for sex glorify God? Number two, stop viewing porn. Again, I know none of you do that, but guess what? A recent study of churches found that over 68% of people that go to church report that pornography is a problem in their household. And that's just the people that report. So we know it's an issue. What you need to know is that pornography stands on the back of and propels forward the sexual exploitation and human trafficking industry. You are never a casual observer. You are a participant and a funder in human trafficking. And I know that's harsh, but it's the reality. So what I'd like to say at this moment is that just as a person who is trafficked feels bound by shame, a person who enjoys the services of people who are being trafficked can also be bound by shame. Porn is specifically designed to lure you in and to keep you coming back for more. It becomes way less of a conscious desire over time. And I'll tell you something I know of which I speak. I have been sober and in recovery for almost 10 years now, so I get what it feels like to be hijacked by an impulse or a desire to do something that you know is wrong, but feel helpless to stop. So if you're watching this today and you feel moved in your spirit or convicted in your heart to stop and you don't know how, we here at Bayview Glen would love to help you. You can call or email us in confidence and we can pray with you and set you up with resources to help you stop. Number three, pray. Prayer changes things. We have it in our lives. We use it when we're sad, when we're defeated, when we're happy, when we're joyous, when we're grieving. Prayer is an interaction with our God. Prayer asks him and invites us in to our inner lives. So ask God to help you be bold in this. Surrender to his all-loving, all-powerful, all-present love for you. And if you're feeling specifically called to go into prayer to help combat human trafficking and you don't know how to do that, good news is we work very closely with an organization called Fight for Freedom. Pastor Lucas will talk a little bit about them later on. And on their website, they have this amazing PDF file that is a very detailed and specific prayer plan and will give you prompts how to walk through praying for this giant issue of human trafficking. Number four, know the signs. I guarantee there is someone you know of or there is a place of business where you live that is participating in human trafficking. And there are so many signs to look out for, too many for me to discuss today, but I do have a few that I'd like to talk to you about right now. Additionally, we're gonna have a comprehensive list on our website and links on our social media platforms so you can see this list of all the things you can look out for. So the first one is controlled movement. People who are transported to or from work or who work at the same place that they live. These places usually don't have any sight lines between the street and the interior. They're almost always never alone and they show signs that their movements are being monitored. Another one is lack of trust. I mean, why wouldn't there be? They may be distrustful and suspicious. They may be especially distrustful of engaging in conversation or, in, or actually in conversation may only know sex-related words or terms or labor-related words or terms. 
changes in behavior. So this may apply more to people you know. All of a sudden, someone starts acting very strangely. They become very isolated. They're at work a lot. They meet someone and become very loyal to them very quickly. They may become secretive and they may even have strange or new tattoos, which is a very common way that victims of human trafficking are branded. If any of these things that you've just heard set off alarm bells and you think you know of someone who you think may be trafficked or you think you know of a place that is trafficking human beings, what do you do? Well, you can start with the human trafficking hotline. In Canada, their number is 1-833-900-1010. And again, this will be on our website. You can go to their website, CanadianHumanTraffickingHotline.ca. They've got an amazing amount of resources. They've got a ton of information, and you can even chat with them live from your tablet, your device, or your phone. Number five, do something. It's not just a nice name for our series. It's actually a directive. I beg of you, don't stay silent. As I said earlier, we cannot ignore the plight of the oppressed and simultaneously honor God. I love what it says in the book of Proverbs about our call to action as Christians. In Proverbs 31, 8 to 9, it reads, Open your mouth for the mute, for the rights of all who are destitute. Open your mouth, judge righteously, defend the rights of the poor and the needy. This is where the rubber hits the road, dear ones. We must open our mouths, especially those of us with privilege in our world of suffering and silence. We have to advocate for those who cannot advocate for themselves. Now, if what I've just said, all of that, seems like an impossible task, well, guess what? It is. If we do it alone, but we are never alone. We have our ever-present, all-powerful, all-loving God who's just waiting for us in prayer to bring him into our lives. And guess what? We have each other too. We are an army for the kingdom. We can do it together. Now let's take a breath for a second. I know this has not been the lightest message ever preached at Bayview Glen. I totally get it. And I thank you so much for staying with me. This is such an important message and you hung in there and I so appreciate it. So when Pastor Lucas and I were prepping for this sermon, oh, you don't actually think he would let me do any of this unsupervised, do you? No. Well, when we were prepping for this sermon, we were talking about how much we love the values here at Bayview Glen Church, one of which is everybody is somebody. And what came to mind is a little story that Pastor Lucas loves, but neither of us could remember if he had ever said here before. So please indulge me if you have heard it before while I tell it in my own words, because I can't think of a better way to sum up what's been said here today. Ready? Okay, here goes. A man was walking along the beach one day and saw a little boy down the shore tossing starfish back into the waves that were beached and dying. As he approached the little boy, he said, Son, there are miles and miles of beach and hundreds and hundreds of starfish washed up. What do you think you're doing? You can't save them all. And as the little boy picked up another starfish and tossed it back into the waves, he looked at the man and said, I know but I just did something for that one. Beloveds, we cannot do everything for everyone, but we can do something for someone. Let's pray. Holy Father, you are good. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for the bravery that it took for everybody to listen to this horrible, horrible crime of human trafficking. It has not been easy, God, and we know your heart cries out. We thank you for this time together. 
We thank you that through you, all things are possible. We thank you that you see every little hurt that every single one of us goes through. We thank you that because of you, we have value and dignity, each and every one of us. Lord, we are so grateful for you. Please bless this church. Bless us as we go forward and give us the courage to stand on your word and to go forth and to have the power that resides in you to do something for somebody. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.